Hello, everybody. So my name is Sabrina Santa Clara, and this is a little bit of a intro video to psychedelic integration from an IFS perspective. And who is with me is Sophie, who is my friend and personal assistant. She's also the author of a book that just got published, so we'll post that at the end. Um, and so today we're just going to sort of explore um, Sophie's desire to do another mushroom journey. And so we're just going to talk about that. And just so the audience knows, um, there is an agreement Sophie and I have made that um, this is going on social media. And if anything comes up that's uncomfortable, it doesn't go on social media. And if at any point she changes her mind, that it will be removed. And so I just want to confirm that we have that agreement. Yep. Sweet. Thanks. So like always, let's go ahead and start with a little bit of mindfulness. Okay. So in this practice, we often close our eyes or lower our gaze just to bring more of our attention inward. And starting by just becoming aware of your breath. I'm not efforting to make it any different. But just becoming aware of your breath breathing you. Allowing your lungs to get all the air you need. And you might even think about breathing yourself bigger. So allowing there to be more space for the fullness of you to live itself. Knowing that as we move into this session and exploring um, the next journey, just noticing any parts that come up around you. Parts that may be curious, parts that may be hesitant, parts that may be questioning the how to and sort of logicizing. Maybe parts that have expectations or desires. And then just making a space for all of them to be here as well. And whenever you're ready, bringing your awareness back to the screen. Or did anything arise for you just in that little introductory mindfulness practice? What came up for me is this, like this warm, almost tide pool in my chest of like this oozing, flowing, warm sensation and then a visual kind of landed in my mental space of me just like walking through the park in a really gentle slow way and just like seeing like the reflections of light and it almost felt like time stood still and that it almost brought me back to my first session on mushrooms like for the very first time. Right. That was incredibly meaningful for me. Right. So this this lends to sort of the experience of moving into and then integrating out of, right? So we were intending to go into the prepping for, and yet what's coming up is like, oh, there's actually some material and some resonance from the last mushroom journey I took. Mm -hmm. Right. 
and how even just beginning to open up the space of mushroom journeyness right created a a recollection mm. right and notice what your feeling state is or was right in response to that yummy wormy oozy chest right? <laughs> the feeling of the being in the park and so how is your feeling state now versus in the moment before we sat and began the mindfulness practice like how is it right now in this moment or, or in the moment that you were experiencing yummy oozy yeah the sun. it it almost felt like i was attaching my identity to like this energy like it felt like all of these roles that I typically take on kind of just like fell away. And what was left was this almost like this loving awareness. Right. Yeah. Which is the ultimate gift of, you know, psychedelics often is returning us home to our bigger self. Yeah. Right. Our atma, okay. our spirit, our soul, or whatever language we want to use. Yeah. Right. And like typically with memory, it can be almost like intellectualized, but with this memory, it's like fully embodied. Like my sensations are bringing me back to the memory. Like right. it's, it's a whole, the integrated memory in my system. And so, you know, when we look at how, when was the last time you had a psychedelic experience? Last year. Okay. So a long time ago. Yeah. Relatively speaking, right? And so when integrative work, one of the things that we can do is we can do the recollection. We can consciously just sit in the mindfulness and remember the states. Or if we were, you know, using music, we could play the same audio version that we were playing at the time of the event or be at the same park in the same location, right? So, so we say in, your, in psychotherapy, right, in um, neuroscience that things fire together or wire together. Right. So if you play a certain music set while you're having a psychedelic experience, that we can actually begin to use that um, mm. activity, right? And that experiential state by playing that music again. Right. And even just the, you know, even all we did was kind of go inside the tree mm. and bring up mushroomness <laughs> right? or the potential of a of a new journey. And actually what rose was the remembrance of a prior journey. Mm -hmm. right and the falling away of identity mm. and coming home to you know yummy wormy oozy right? <laughs> essential self and the what i heard was the sort of sweetness of being in relationship with nature yeah right and so that's an invitation for you going forward right is to have these mindful moments where we go back to what we experienced so that that which we experience becomes a living breathing something in our day-to-day -day lives right because that is really i think something that most of us crave is how do we get back to our essential self instead of the roles that we play in the and the too busyness of our western lives mm -hmm. right And so, right, so that's an invitation for you moving forward. Mm. And thinking about your next mushroom journey coming up, right? Connecting to that past experience. Right. You know, oftentimes if we have a wonderful experience in mushrooms and we've had, um, maybe don't have a lot of experience, then we might expect that we're going to have the same experience, which may not mm. be the case. Right. Right. It, well, we're definitely not going to have the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. Right. But it may be an uncomfortable experience and it may be a loving experience and it may be, you know, mm. maybe a lot of things. Mm. Right. And so actually going inside again and just sitting with why is there a desire at this point? What is a desire? now that leads you to wanting to take mushrooms again i think
there's a certain like sense of being in like I just moved back to my hometown mm -hmm. um, and although I'm not living in the same neighborhood there's a sense of like this is a new chapter for me mm -hmm. and that brings up like well, what role am I going to play in this new chapter? Mm -hmm. And I'm really wanting to remind myself of like this, this aspect of like, more of like my essential nature of like what remind myself of the, the isness that I am. Mm -hmm. Um, and my connection to nature as I move through this new chapter and like come into different roles because I don't want to get lost in any roles that I take on mm -hmm. as I as I come into this new chapter. Yeah. And so in just looking back at, you know, the five minutes previous, right? Can you see how just actually connecting to what you've already experienced before can actually shift your mindset? Mm. Actually take you back to, oh, I don't actually have to be a role. Mm -hmm. I can actually live from my essential self while holding roles, which is different, mm -hmm. right? Than confusing ourselves for the role that we play. Mm -hmm. So there is a desire to, there's a recognition of this transition period mm -hmm. and a desire to not get stuck in roles mm -hmm. right? and to live from essential self. Yeah. yeah. And so also, there's also a like desire for clarity, clarity around clarity around my path, my purpose. And, you know, it might not be like I have an epiphany about, oh, I'm going to do the X, Y, Z thing next in like the physical realm, but mm -hmm. some sort of clarity of like, this is, this is what I need to be focusing on in a sense as, as something to integrate back in right. of like, what's, what's the theme of this chapter, right? What's the theme of this chapter in my life and how can I focus in and like hone in on that? So I have a curiosity because I, I know you from our last session. <laughs> we did we did a demo to put online and then didn't record it. So. <laughs> there was a piece that came up and that that was a soft like part mm -hmm. that wants to orchestrate and manage your healing process. Mm. <laughs> I just want to check in and see if if this desire for clarity around path and purpose. Just check in and, and take a moment and see how spacious this curiosity is. Does it feel like it's coming more from this orchestrator self-like part hmm. or more from the spacious curiosity? When I said purpose, it felt like the the part that wants to heal and fix. Mm -hmm. And when I mentioned theme, I felt more spacious and more curious. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder what theme will arise with this and what I can, what, what can be processed versus like, let me be very clear on my purpose. And it has to like, look this certain way and it has right. to be this Put it way. In a category, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so let's go on the slide for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just check in with that self-like part. Right? It's wanting to sort of create structure around this upcoming journey. And ask it straightforwardly, how does it feel about this upcoming journey? So how does it feel about the coming, the coming journey yeah. does it want okay. to direct it does it like what's its, what's its quality it's like as long as i have some say and some input in this like go for it <laughs> like it's 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 
really telling me like I don't want to lose control <laughs> yeah I don't I don't want to lose complete control as long as I have some sort of say and it's it's like it's like telling me I I want to like give me your intention like I I want to like craft the perfect intention so that the perfect thing like comes up from that right does that make sense to you yeah yeah and is it aware of you observing it yeah yeah, yeah right now it is yeah how's that feeling towards you it's again like not antagonistic but a little bit like mm, it feels a little watched and a little bit like, I'm not quite sure why you're here. I thought I was controlling the show. Mm -hmm. But like, okay, if you want to be here, you know. So it still thinks it's controlling the show, but like, <laughs> it really you're on does. the other side, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So can you let it know who you are? How old you are? And just see how it relates to them. And it told me, like, I know how old you are. Like, you don't have to tell me I know this. Right. He knows everything, right? I know everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And how are you feeling towards it? Mm. I'm feeling... Like a little playful with it, almost like I just kind of want to poke it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like and play with it, kind of rock it off. It's like kilter. And how does it respond to that? It's like, what are you, what are you doing? You know, um, it's it's a lot more like serious mm -hmm. and like not really wanting to play. All right. And so does the playing with it, wanting to play with it, feel respectful to its space of being? Yeah. Okay. And how is it feeling right now? Does it know that you respect it, if that's true? Mm. it I don't know if it quite knows that yeah. again it's like it's it's just like a neutral feeling towards it but I don't know if it has full respect okay so ask the place in you that feels neutral ask that place if it would be willing to just step back so that you can be in authentic relationship with this self like Is it willing to do that? Yeah. And checking in and seeing how you're feeling towards the sort of self-like part. I don't know. I feel like it's a little confusing because it's like there's this part that relates to the self-like part in the same way that the self-like part is relating to the other parts, if that makes sense. So like there's this part that is like, I wish that you didn't feel like you had to control everything. Right. I wish you didn't feel like you had to be perfect ever everything and know everything. Right. But it feels like the same energy that that part also embodies. Yeah. Okay. So there's another part in relationship to that self-like part that we designated last time as an in utero part, right? Mm. 
So there's another part that's really wishing it would be different. Yeah. Wanting it to be different and experience its world and its relationship to other parts differently. Yeah, there's there's a, and I don't know if this is connected to this part, but it's like, there's a part that's just like exhausted by the human experience. Like, yeah, just by the constant feeling that like there's something to be worked on or healed. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Let that part not make sense. And really let that part know that it actually doesn't have to do anything here. It doesn't have to help. It doesn't have to effort. Actually, none of your parts actually have to effort. That's really, in some ways, the intention of this work is effortlessness. Hmm. All, all the parts chimed up and they were like, wait, but wouldn't we die? Nope. They didn't, weren't doing anything? Nope. Would they like an answer to that? Yeah. Yeah. So you know how when you're doing dishes and you've got some place to go and you're just like doing dishes and you're rushed doing dishes? Mm-hmm. There's an effortfulness in do the doing the dishes, mm. right? And then there are times where you're just kind of relaxed and you're just kind of soaping and rinsing and soaping and rinsing. It's not it's not so effortful. Mm. You're still doing the dishes. It just doesn't feel effortful doing the dishes. Mm -hmm. It's not a burden. So effortlessness doesn't mean that we're not engaged just means we don't have the burden or the stress or the intent the tension around the engagement mm. and just see how they receive that just like an instant sigh yeah like they might actually enjoy what they do if they didn't have to effort so hard yeah including the self And so we're not here to eradicate them. We're not here to turn them upside down. Yeah, but there's something coming through like, um, hmm. like there was a time like recently where there was a part that needed to feel like it was eradicating these other parts to, to like progress on the like a spiritual path yeah so notice what your hand is doing so notice the movements right yeah associated with that sort of having to organize and right yeah it's very much like yeah so yeah let the hands do that for a moment let them really mm -hmm. feel what it's like to be in that having to manage state it it just feels like putting everything in its place yeah tidying up and there's like a staccato energy to it yeah and so offer that place your breath. And in fact, offer the breath into your hands. Hmm. And let that place know it doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to orchestrate this. It doesn't have to navigate it. it doesn't have to plan it. it. Doesn't have to organize. It actually just gets to be on the receiving end. And just see. Like, it. good, because I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Mm. Let it know you get that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so notice how it came up into the I'm exhausted again with the kind of linear staccato. Right. Yeah. And actually, let's do that. Can keep doing that linear staccato and see if you can actually then slow the movement down. 
find flow in the movement. So going slower, slowing down the staccato, and see if rather than going from a hard movement, if you can even out the forward and back so it becomes one movement. Like an infinity symbol almost, right? Where does it begin and where does it end? And allow that place to breathe in the flow that we can just move soft and gentle. And just respond rather than orchestrate. And just give it permission to find its own flow. What feels good to it? And just notice what's here now. And seeing if it still has organizing energy. If it can find its way into just being this. How's it feeling right now? There's a lot of fluidity to it. Yeah. Like it it still carries a similar like energy like there's there's a higher energy to it which was the same as the staccato but it's like it's less choppy and more fluid yeah and just see how it feels to this part to be in this fluid state Is it still exhausting? Do I does it feel no, it's just like nothing's wrong. It's just existing. Yeah. So really let those other parts take in when we're talking about doing something without effortfulness. <laughs> right? That it can just be in the space that it is from effortlessness. How are you feeling towards this place? It feels like non-attached, receptive presence. Right. So just offering that a breath and allowing it to find its way into somatic stillness. It's fine. Coming again, hum to breath. And returning again to the part that wanted to have some control over the next journey. And see how that part is feeling right now. There's definitely a softening mm -hmm. and just like really tapping into like the wonder of like the mystery of it all like just um, there's this not knowing but there's like almost this feeling of awe in that yeah and so letting this part know that the upcoming journey is actually a gift for it hmm. And see if it can take that in. Yeah, just let out a yeah. sigh. And so as this place, if you have its consent to take the next journey that arises.
Yeah, it wants to like shake my hand. <laughs> you let it do that then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Breathing yourself bigger. I'm saying that this place needs anything else from you. I think there's there's a part that's coming up that we explored in the last session that didn't get videotaped, but it's like the vigilant mm -hmm. part. That that part's coming up and like is letting itself be known. Great. So thank it for that. Mm -hmm. But no, that's exactly why we're here is to attend. And how are you feeling towards this vigilance part right now? Like my initial reaction was like, oh god damn it, like you're here again. Like, oh mm -hmm. I just yeah. So yeah. Ask that part to step back. Not to go away. We just want it to take just a step back so that we can recognize that it's another part. It sounds like this part is a little exhausted or frustrated by the vigilance part of you, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. So let it know you see that. Does that make sense to you that it would be frustrated or exhausted? Totally. Yeah, let it know that. And see if it can get you getting it. Yeah, it's so interesting like it's oscillating between getting me getting it mm -hmm. and then like slipping right back into the role it it's like a yeah can you let it know that you it getting that you're getting it doesn't mean that we're asking it to feel any different okay you getting it doesn't mean that it has to go into a peaceful place or relax we're just letting letting it know that Oh, that makes sense that you're frustrated. It makes sense that it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. Just really want to let it know that it's not alone. And can it receive that? Yeah. yeah. That's like saying back, like, yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. And how are you feeling towards it? I just, I feel a lot of like compassion for the ways in which it's like really trying to help me. Like, like it's all just trying to help and protect me. And it's like, wow, that's. It's really sweet, actually. It is. Let it know. That's, that's actually you know. really kind. They're quite, when we get down to it, they're quite tender. All of our parts want good for us. Yeah. Right. So ask this part that really is exhausted by village villains and kind of wants it to go away. Ask it if it's wanting it to go away has ever made it really go away. No, no. It's yeah. telling me no, never, never, ever. Right. So as even, never. Even though it has a good intention, right? It's it's by its desire, it doesn't actually really help the situation. Mm -hmm. Can I get that? It's telling me like, ah, oh, I know that, but I don't know, I don't know, I, I can't do anything else but that like I feel helpless. Right. And so let this place know that it's actually perceiving it right. It actually doesn't have the capacity to help this vigilance place. Hmm. But you do. Hmm. And so if it would be willing to step aside for a little bit so that you could attend the vigilance. It's like, it's saying, oh, but I can't take on your role and do it myself 
Like, yeah. but that's what I want to do. I want to take on your role in control. Yeah. So thank you for trying to help. But just that I know it just doesn't have that capacity. It's no fault of its own. It just can't be you. It just can only be itself. Feels like, like it failed somehow. Can you let it know it didn't? It can't actually be you. Any more than a spruce can be a pine tree. Any squirrel can be a bunny. It's asking me, but then what purpose do I serve? Yeah. Ask it if it didn't have to be trying to control the genes, what would it rather be doing? It would rather be just like play, playful, having fun. Great. Let it know that that is a really important job. It's a really important role for humans is to play and have fun. It's telling me that it's it's worried and it's scared to do that. Yeah, how come? What's it afraid would happen if it was playful and had fun? It's afraid that that fun is is distracting and it's too much pleasure and it's addictive and it's it's not leading toward any sense of like true liberation and it's just keeping me bound to this earthly plane <laughs> it's 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 really worried about letting itself feel like joy boy yeah, yeah. Ask this part how it learned that joy and fun were not valuable. Or something to be eradicated, or something to be judged, or not okay. It's, it's telling me like, That, that something happened, which was really painful. And that that pain, something about like, it's just not going to last. And people around you have taken advantage of this play and, and this fun and this pleasure and sought it out and look where they are now. Look how effed up they are. You don't want to do that to yourself. Okay. So notice what's happening with your human emotions. Yeah, my yeah. It's Push just, it away. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It doesn't want to be like those other people who have fallen into the pit of yeah right hedonism exactly. it doesn't at all it's like i want to i want to be get as far away from that as possible right can you let that know that that makes sense <sighs> makes total sense yeah and ask it if it knows that there's a difference between authentic joy and playfulness and hedonism it knows that there is a difference. It's just worried that my system will take not, off. yeah, will slip into something different. Yeah. So it doesn't trust your system. Yeah. Yeah. Are there parts of your system it doesn't trust? Does it not trust you? Part, it's the, yeah, it doesn't trust the parts, certain parts. 
Yeah, what parts doesn't it trust? Um, like the, the escapism parts, parts that want to escape, the parts that want to not feel, the parts that want to um, is connected to, to escapism. It's just like the parts that want to like fuse into something to like get rid of the pain or like fuse into something as a means to like escape um the reality of like life right yeah And I'm going to name something because I know you work with it, because that also includes sort of certain spiritual practices. Yeah. So really let that part know that you see it and you see its concern about these other parts. Mm -hmm. that it makes sense that it's concerned about these other parts taking over because they have, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you let this part know that feels true and know that I'm taking notes of the parts that, that those will be parts that you will be working with? Because it's not going to feel safe until those parts have been unburdened it's it feels really really scary and it's also it's also willing it's just like this is it just keeps telling me like just don't end up like this person like just don't yeah. Can you let it know that, that in spite of these other escapism parts that are parts, there is also your essential self, the one that we start off with in the beginning of this, that is in the sun without the walls, and the yummy, chewy, gooeyness of the chest. Oh, you but know I what actually know. did, like, come up for me was actually the the that memory again of the 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 first psilocybin trip I had and it actually responds quite well to that like it knows yeah it knows that 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 essential self is there exactly so really remind of that and that that place is committed to working to the escapist parts falling into spiritual practices that pull you out of action that's really true and that that grounded wise loving expansive self is always here even when there are other parts yeah yeah. This part is almost like taking on a like a little like toddler and like mm -hmm. it's as if this toddler just had like a big cry and is like sniffling is like okay like I guess <laughs> all right yeah and how's it feeling towards you It almost feels like it's it's surrendering to something bigger, almost like a little kid, like surrendering to their parent, like, I guess, you know. Yeah. Let it know that you got it. You know how to navigate this. I'm just checking in and see if there's anything else that feels familiar. It needs like check-ins. Mm -hmm. 
ask it help and what would those check-ins look like? It just, it just needs to know almost like a progress report. Like it, it needs to know that it, it needs to be in connection and aware of this like wise and grounded self. Yeah. And it needs that, that essential self to like check in on it and help it ground. Right. So I have a suggestion. So mm -hmm. one of my suggestions might, might be to do a little breathing mindfulness to go back to the remembrance of the journey in order to connect to that wise grounded self and then check in with this part. Mm. How might that be? Yeah. 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 This part is very uh, agreeable to it because I think this part has worked, has related to the wise grounded self before. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I've, like, I in the past, like this, this was like five years ago mm -hmm. that happened, and I, I constantly re recollected that. That journey right in a way like so I feel like it already has a relationship with it it's just needing a little bit more right solidity and, and solidity maybe missing it a little bit it's oh it's missing it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. makes sense quite sweet actually so checking in and see if there's anything else that needs from you right I think the vigilant part needs a little bit of love too. Like exactly. <laughs> the vigilant part is like, wait, wait, don't forget about me. Yeah, we weren't going to. We were actually going to go <laughs> next. We just wanted to make sure that the part was taken care of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it okay to switch to that vigilant part? Yeah. All right. And how's it feeling right now? And how are you feeling towards it? There's a lot of like this is a very familiar feeling to me of like almost like you know with a violin string when you um tune it too tight mm -hmm. and it gets really like taut right that's kind of how it feels right yeah. here does that make sense to you yes yes Yes, it does. Right. And how are you feeling towards it? Part of me just doesn't know how to relate to it. And I'm, I just kind of feel like I'm at a loss. Yeah. So ask that part of you that's at a loss. <clears throat> and doesn't know how to relate to it. That's that part to step to the side. And is it willing to do that? Yeah. Yeah. And now return your gaze towards the vigilance. Oh, okay. Something came up. Mm -hmm. The vigilant part, or maybe somewhere in my system is saying, I wish I didn't have any needs. Oh. I feel like that's, that's, that's apart from the vigilant. So that's a separate part from the vigilance. Yeah, but is it related to the vigilance? I, I feel like it because like the vigilance is like saying I have needs um, and like, please respect my needs. Mm -hmm. And so like, the, then there's like a part of myself that doesn't really want to acknowledge that I do. Right. So let, vigil let vigilance know we're not letting go of it. But we need to sort of take a little detour again, and we're going to come back to it if that's okay. 
Because in order to attend to its needs, we need to attend to the part that's trying to convince itself or doesn't want to have needs. It's kind of getting in the way of the vigilance getting its needs met. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, we really want to be able to, for vigilance to get its needs met. So let's take a little detour to this part that really just wishes it didn't have needs. Now ask it, how come? Because everything would be so much easier yeah. if I didn't have needs. How so? Because I wouldn't have to be like making people over extend their energy or make them mad or frustrated. So notice the way this place is phrasing this. I wouldn't have to make people extend their energy. I wouldn't have to make people sad. I wouldn't have to make people. Just like this part perceives that its needs is a burden to other people. Mm -hmm. Am I naming that right? Totally. Right. And does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. And does it get that you're getting? Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. And how do you feel towards your needs? You get that this part doesn't want them, but how do you feel to that this part's needs? I just feel like it's like it makes sense and it also feels like this almost connected back to like a visual we had in a, a different session of like this baby that just needs to like suck on the mother's milk kind of like it just that's just what it needs right it's just biological, right? Yeah. Like there's no judgment. There's no morality around it, right? It's just a human needing milk to develop. Yeah. Needing nurturance. Needing yeah. warmth. Right? Mm-hmm. And just let this little one energetically suckle and know that for a loving mother it is not a burden it is a joy and see if you can receive that It may not, we're just checking. It it doesn't it doesn't understand it. Yeah. It's like almost like that doesn't fit into my version of reality. Mm -hmm. So ask this place. When was the first time it experienced its needs being a burden to another? How long has it known this feeling state? Does it go back as young as infancy? Um, to toddler. Mm -hmm. Does it have any images or stories it's showing you around that, or is it more just a sense? It's of it's showing me. Um, actually, this is interesting. We have like some um, VHS tapes and it's showing me a scene where I'm like in a bathtub mm -hmm. and my parents are like having a disagreement and you can't really hear what they're saying, but there's like a dense energy mm -hmm. and like the, the scene, like you can see me and I'm actually like trying to sing to dispel the density, but I 
I feel really scared and I don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. So this little one is in the bathtub kind of alone. Yeah, she feels very alone. Yeah. Can you open a doorway in time and go in there and be with her? You attend to her so she's not alone. I felt like my whole body kind of went back into that. Mm -hmm. So breathe yourself in. Let her be there and also let that grounded self that we began the session with. The you that revealed itself in your last mushroom journey. The connected to the all that it is. The you that is beyond the walls. See if you can come back to that place. And also let her be there. And just see if that's possible. So let that you enter the doorway in time and be with her. She like I'm imagining transferring that that feeling state from the very beginning of the the session when I recalled that journey I'm like transferring it into her like her little beingness yeah yeah she has a self too right yeah but she has an outgoing spirit a wholeness And how's that going? Yeah. She's just like, she's just confused. Like, why? Hmm. I don't know what is confusing when you. Her caretakers are being loud and scary and dancing up the energy. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm wondering if she would like to go to a different place where the energy is not so dense. Yes. Great. Ask her if she'd like to come with you out. I'd like to go outside. Great. So let's take her to that doorway in time. She'd also like to be naked. Great. She'd really like to be like no clothing at all. Mm -hmm. Great. Just in the joy of her body. Beautiful. That's right. <laughs> Let her know she can do that. Seal the doorway behind you so she never has to go back there. And let her go into the right kind of outside. What would feel good for her? Beach or forest or grass or anything she wants. She she wants like she wants a being. She wants a companion. Mm -hmm. Does she know what kind of companion she wants? Oh, she wants a friend. Mm -hmm. An animal friend or a people friend? Or a spirit mm -hmm. friend? Spirit friend. Great. And where are you guys located right now? We're in Davis, California. Okay. Invite a spirit friend to reveal itself.
It's a dragonfly. Hmm. How is she feeling now? Very gentle. Mm -hmm. Just see if there's anything that needs to be named, any ickiness that needs to be let go of in her little body. <laughs> and if there is, let her let it go. Offer it up to air and fire and help her. And she wants to dance it out. Beautiful. Let her dance it out in her, her beautiful naked body. <laughs> right? She's such a goofball, my goodness. So let her dance all the ickiness out. And as the ickiness flows out, let all the joy of the lovingness of being in her own body. Really fill up her cells. Oh. She now went to karate class. And like staying alive by I think the Bee Gees is playing. It's like very funky, like 70s music. Like she's really vibing with that. So she's a pretty joyful, joyful <laughs> being this one. Yes, she is. <laughs> Great. Let her know she can just be her. She can just be her funky, vibrant <laughs> body, sometimes naked with a dragonfly spirit friend. She can just be that. She can just be her true nature. And how is she doing now? Yeah, she's having fun. Yeah. And there, there's a part that's like, but this has to end. <laughs> like, this can't be like. <laughs> so that part now, like, it actually doesn't have to. She can just be her. There are other parts that might want other jobs and do other things, but she can just do what she wants to do. She can just be her. Hmm. And other parts that need to do the dishes and, you know, do the laundry, those parts can still be around, but she can just be the dancing one, and the karate one. <laughs> she says to that, booyah. <laughs> awesome <laughs> see if there's anything else she needs from you before we take our conscious awareness away from her if there's anything else she needs from you right in this moment or in the coming months just like honor her and value her right so maybe checking in with her at the same time you check in with the other one yeah yeah thank her for that and for her willingness to trust you and let her know that we're going to sort of move our attention away from her and she can just keep playing and dancing and karate <laughs> booyah -ing. <laughs> yeah yeah is she okay with that yeah great so another full breath and let's return to vigilance and see how vigilance is doing now. Vigilance is saying like, this is, this is all that I wanted.
with less vigilance what it needs. What does it truly need? Just to like honor that it's responding to like it truly it truly honors and values this fancy karate <laughs> free spirit self like it it never wants that to feel stifled mm -hmm. and like always wants to protect it. Does it know that you actually are in relationship with this one now? It, it does, but, but it's saying like, not like I know her. What does that know about her that you don't? Hmm. It knows that there's something that like that happened when she was a teen mm -hmm. that like stifled her joy, her connection. And that it was, it was like a complete paradigm shift in her whole mind. It sounds like it's giving me some, almost like some trauma information. Yeah. Oh, for sure. All right. So thank vigilance for that. And how does it receive you receiving that download? Feels a bit more understood. Yeah. So let it know that we're not going to forget about that. Yeah. Vigilance is showing me to like my old room when I was 14. It was very dark and damp. Right. And there's just like, there's emptiness there. Mm -hmm. It's showing me that like, Vigilance is there to protect me from this space, this vortex. The vortex of the 14 year old damn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so notice that it's receiving that or perceiving that, that era and that space as a vortex. It really feels like it's protecting. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Totally. Absolutely. Right. And so there's a little more work with vigilance to do and a little more work with this 14 year old experience. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. And so letting vigilance know that in the interest of time, mm -hmm that we're actually going to put a pause on this, but we're actually going to come back to it. Mm -hmm. It's really important. And just see how it feels about that. Ooh. And this is something that mm -hmm. I'm like, it almost feels like a memory of something recent mm -hmm. that came up. It's like telling me, don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. Like over and over and over again. Right. Can you let that one know that you got it? Yeah. 
pray that you're going to spend some time after this session really notating the parts that need some more attention. Yeah. Right. Not only this don't forget about me part, but the other parts that we named earlier about, mm. you know, um, I can't remember the, name of the ones that kind of don't want to see. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the languaging you, you used, but the sort of avoidance parts. Yeah. All right. So let them know that I've jotted those down on the map and that you're committed to working with them. If that feels accurate. I'm mm -hmm. not committed to coming back to this vigilance part. And can they receive that? Yeah. Okay. And so because this vigilance part came up in relationship right, to the upcoming mushroom journey, mm -hmm. can you let this vigilance know that you will not be taking the journey until you have its consent. Yeah. And just see how it feels about that. Okay, my good. Right. I sigh. Yeah. And so we only do medicine journeys in support of all of our parts when they are ready with their consent. We do them in service to our parts. We really let it know that that's a fundamental principle which we're not going to go against. Thanking me. Yeah. And thank this part for revealing as much as it has. And again, letting it know that you are committed to coming back to it to the part that says, don't forget about me, to the 14-year-old space with the vortex and the avoidance parts. All right, my name and them all will in place get forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Again, thanking all your beautiful parts for mm -hmm. helping with their hold, for being willing to let us work with them. And last check in before we take our conscious awareness away from them. Anything else they need or need you to know? No. All right. We're taking one more full breath. Coming back to the fullness of your breath and the fullness of your body. Feeling the chair beneath you supporting you. Atmosphere around you. And whenever you're ready, bringing your awareness back to the room and to the screen. Thank you for trusting me with all your words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that you want to name about this experience for you? before I sort of speak to the camera. Yeah, just, it was really interesting watching, like witnessing from what came up from the beginning of that like essential self from that mushroom journey I took, mm -hmm. how it was like weaving itself right. in session. Yeah. It's such a beautiful resource for, for quite a few of your yeah. parts. Yeah. Like a lot of my parts actually have very beautiful relationships with that. Right. And they're missing that. Yeah. And so that is in some ways, I'm going to sort of speak to you and, and the camera and the audience mm -hmm. sort of at this point, right? This is the, this is why we need the integrative work following psychedelic sessions, right? There are a lot of reasons. One of them is when we come into expansiveness and greater self and whatever, you know, different traditions use different language for that space, right? And when we, when we are in that expansive state, you know, IFS calls it soul. Hindus call it Atman, right? Christians call it soul. Doesn't really matter, right? 
that when we're in that space, that that is actually what we want to be able to resource all of our other parts. And, and, when, and when they are resourced with that greater self, right, they relax. Yeah. Right? It's almost like, you know, having a parent in the room or having the bigger something like, oh, I don't have to do everything. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> the other piece about this, again, for you as well as for those who are watching, is how much material there is when we work with parts on the front end and how important it is, and I can't stress this enough, and this is why IFS is particularly skilled at that, at getting our parts consent before we go into mm -hmm. any kind of psychedelic sessions. Mm -hmm. Right? That that when we look at going into psychedelic sessions and having the most helpful experience possible, what is required is surrender. Right? If we have parts that are in resistance or who have not consented, we are not going to be able to fully can surrender. We will have parts that surrender and parts that are like, hell no. Mm. Right? And that's when we get more rub. Mm. Right. And have maybe unnecessarily challenging experiences. Not that challenging experiences don't happen with psychedelics, but a lot of this stuff, a lot of the, the hard challenges can be avoided when we do the work on the front end right so still a little bit more work for you to do before you do your next mushroom journey yeah. right mm -hmm. probably not too much <laughs> right it's my experience that usually before a journey it's anywhere you know depending where people are at it's usually between i would say most on average is two to five sessions before the journey right of course, there's some that are less and there's some that are more. But that's kind of about what it seems to be to me. Right. <laughs> so, as always, so thank you for your friendship and for your willingness and for yeah, letting me hold the role of facilitator, right? And so, as I always do when I'm, you know, doing practice sessions or facilitating with someone who is a known person, it's important for me to name. I am not your facilitator. I am just your friend. Exactly. <laughs> and so if you could name that you are not my client, I'm just my friend. I'm not your client. I'm just your friend. Sort of de-rolling the, um, de-rolling that for now. And, mm -hmm. and then um, thank you everybody for um, watching this and I hope that it's been helpful. All right. Take good care. <laughs>